welcome back to another vlog. I am like mostly, mostly moved into my new place. I just have one bedroom that's still a little I have been sleeping terribly. I've been eating terribly. I haven't been going on my morning walks. I haven't been doing my morning pages. I know in my vlog last week, I was like, I'm a mess. Um, Yeah, I'm still there. The last week has been really hard because I have always been the type of person where if I go and sit at my desk to do work and my bedroom is dirty or the bed is not made or there's a laundry basket in the corner with clothes that need to get folded, I cannot concentrate on what I'm doing in front of me unless my space around me is clean and everything else is done. So this week when I've been trying to do anything or focus any sort of brain attention on things that are other than putting the apartment together, it has been so impossible for me to compartmentalize. I don't know if it's like an anxiety thing or me just being like a complete control clean freak, um, but it sucks. I'm so excited to just have the apartment together and have like all of my clothes put away and just being unpacked and having it feel like it's my home already. But anyways, we're almost there. And then once I get everything unpacked, then I have to pack again because I have to go to New York in like a week. I don't know why I do this to myself, but it's fun. It's all fun. This is all fun. I'm young. I'm having fun. We're we're getting out there. We're seeing the world. Also, I wanted to show you guys. I did end up putting that runner rug in the kitchen and I kind of love it. Taylor got me these flowers yesterday and they're so pretty. And they have this little green. It's like my ideal color scheme. I'm like pretty proud of myself for getting all this together in just a few days. This is the living room. So we got the couch in, got the TV mounted. I have some random little nincombobs and stuff places, but for the most part, it's put together. I got my coffee machine set up. This is the coffee I've been using for the last probably two years, to be honest, and I love that blend. Um, and then I got this little orange juice vase on Amazon, and Taylor and I got in a huge argument about it because he thought it was stupid, but I think it's really cute. So I'm gonna put little like fake flowers in there. Here's my bedroom so far. So I need to get like a box or a cord hider for all of these. I absolutely need a TV in my bedroom because I watch movies every night before bed. This is my little desk set up and I have my essential oil thing that I put in essential oils every morning and every night. So right when I wake up, I do eucalyptus and then before I go to sleep, I do this sleep one. I got this fake fig tree from Amazon because I can keep smaller plants alive, but these big plants, I've had a few and you just have to take really good care of them. So when we're traveling, they just always die. So I just got a fake one. I have not unpacked these boxes yet. And then I also just ordered white bed sheets for this because I feel like the gray just doesn't really go with the rest of the room. And then this is Lavender. I've had her since I was little. And then this is Wimby, the bunny that I got at Wimbledon. Um, thank you guys on Instagram for helping me name her. And then this I had in my living room at the old place. And I've been thinking about putting it above the bed, but I also found these really cute card wall designs from Etsy that I kind of want to put there, there, and there. And then this is the master closet so far. So I've got all my heels and stuff there yeah guys i know i have a lot of clothes i really need to go through them and like donate stuff and then taylor's clothes are hung up here i've got like my pajamas and all my skirts and shorts and then i think yeah i've got some jeans here and then i hung some pants up there i really prefer to hang pants just because i like being able to see everything when i'm getting ready at some point when i'm home in the next couple months i really want to do like a full closet clean out video and if i'm making a video about it i'm much more inclined to actually do it and then this is the room that was like stacked floor to ceiling with boxes last week so i've made progress on it for sure um i have my jackets hung up here and like sweaters hung up there because i didn't have space in the other closet this is all my beauty products and i genuinely don't know what to do with them. And then the closet in here, I put all of my sneakers and I hung up all my sweatshirts because again, I just like being able to see everything. And then in these drawers, I've got all of my workout clothes and 
like sports bras and leggings. This is something that has been much requested and this is for me to have a conversation about my favorite books, specifically books that are more in the realm of self-help and nonfiction. Since I just unpacked a lot of my books, I thought I would kind of go through some of my favorites. I do like reading hard copy books. However, they're very heavy to pack. So I also read a lot on my Kindle app, on my iPad. But I just wanted to go through some of my favorites and ones that I feel like have really genuinely helped me. Now at this point, I've slowed down quite a bit, but there was a time in like 2021 where, as I mentioned in the last video, I was just not the best version of myself. I, I was really struggling to be honest. And there were a number of books that I read that felt like made a really big difference for me. Some of them I read and a lot of the information was just like, yeah, that makes sense, but I don't know. It, did, it didn't have a huge impact on me, um, but these are the ones that I feel like did. First one I've talked about in many of my videos. I've talked about it on Instagram for years, and that is Untethered Soul by Michael Singer. But that book was, I think, the first book that really changed my life. Like Afterwards, I finished it, and I was like, this is going to impact me so hugely. And to this day, it still does. And I liked reading that one on my Kindle because there was so much in the book that I highlighted and that I've gone back to again and again and again. And I think this book is really for someone who has trouble overthinking. In 2021, I just felt very lost. I wasn't really in a career that I liked. I didn't know what my purpose was. And I was just in this constant, like miserable rumination about my life. And I feel like that book helped me kind of zoom out a little bit and think a little bit more positively and honestly just learn to let things go and not just be constantly in your head about everything. Um, it's a wonderful, wonderful book. If you're not really a reader, he also has a podcast, I think. I think it's only like five episodes or something, but he covers a lot of the topics in the book, in the podcast as well. Um, so I will link that down below. The next one I read a long time ago. This one's called Ask and It Is Given by Esther and Jerry Hicks. I really like them. I listen to a lot of Esther's stuff on YouTube as well. But it's kind of just a good introduction book about positive thinking and manifestation. It is a lot of kind of spiritual, magical, like you create your life and universe, which I think is fascinating to read about. Do I really believe in it? I don't know. This whole popularization of manifestation and anything you think you can do, um, I think thinking in that way and just having a positive mindset about it can really help you. Even if you're not super believing in exactly what they're saying, it helps you just be more aware. Times where I've read this, where I've been in just kind of a negative mindset, it's very helpful to just to just be more aware. Like if I wake up in the morning and I read this and I'm reading about the importance of my thought and positivity throughout the day, I will be better about catching myself if I'm in those negative thought spirals. This next one I've also talked about quite a bit and I've mentioned that my friends and I call this the Bible. This is Why Men Love Bitches by Sherry Agrov and there's a lot of discussion online about how this book is problematic, which I kind of agree with and understand. I would say it is not the most feminist book in the world, but if you are a girl watching this video, and if you've ever been in or possibly currently are in a situation where you are in a situation ship with a guy and it's 10 30 p.m on a thursday and he texts you to come over and you get out of bed drive 25 minutes to his house to sleep with him i need you to read this book i need you to i've literally mailed this book to multiple of my friends who have been in situations with guys like that. I don't agree with everything in this book. I think everything in this book you should take and read with a grain of salt, but I think the attitude that this book can give someone if they're in a situation with a man like that is so, so necessary. I don't believe in playing games with men, but I do believe in 
not being that nice to them. The next one I also read on Kindle, it's called 101 Essays That Will Change the Way You Think. It's an easy read, especially if you are trying to get in the habit of reading. I think this is a really, really good one to start with because you can just read like one of the essays when you wake up in the morning or right before you go to sleep at night. To be honest, some of them are like, yeah, duh, but some of them did make me think and like I said, I think it's just like a nice light read. I think there's some important and valuable lessons in it. The same author of that book, however, wrote another book that I also read on Kindle, which is called The Mountain Is You. And this is her less popular book, but I actually think is the better of the two. This is actually a really, really good self-help book. So even though it's less popular, a lot of it is about self-sabotage, trauma, victim mentality, which to be honest, I feel like I've always been pretty good about. Like I have been through things, I've had things happen to me, but I've always been really good at being able to pull myself out of situations that I'm not happy in or that I don't like. I can get up and move somewhere. I can break up with someone. I can quit a job that I don't like. However, I have a lot of people in my life who just do not have that same sort of get up and go and change because it's scary. It genuinely is scary. Um, so, you know, if you're maybe in one of those situations, I think this book is a really, really good resource to pull yourself out of anything that you're going through. If you need to pull yourself out of a bad relationship, if you need to get yourself to the gym, if you need to stop sabotaging your relationships, um, I think that she has a lot of really good, valuable like tools and information in here. And to be completely honest, I have a very difficult time being friends with or being around people who have victim mentalities and who are unable to pull themselves out of situations that are completely solvable. And that's something that I'm working on is trying to be more compassionate and having more empathy for people who are like that or who feel stuck in those situations. For example, I've had friends who hate their job. They absolutely hate their job, they hate their boss. Every time that you know I catch up with them for happy hour, it is just complaining about their job and how unhappy they are. And so I'll say, oh, so where new have you applied to? And they'll say, I haven't applied anywhere yet. And then so in my mind, I'm like, okay, you've been complaining about the same thing for six months and you're not doing anything to change it. I don't wanna hear about it. I'm sure it's frustrating being in that situation, but it's also frustrating for the people around you to constantly be listening to you in that situation. I think this book is also really good for like self-awareness on both sides of that spectrum. I don't know if this would constitute as like a self-help book, but this is like a good feminist read. It's called Women Don't Owe You Pretty. This girl Florence Given has the cutest Instagram too. I read this a couple years ago and I remember really liking it and it has all these fun, funky, drawings in it. I think it's kind of like a, it's like a woman power book. Okay, and then the rest I think I all read on Kindle. So one that I read last summer is called Becoming Supernatural. It's by Joe Dispenza. This is not a light read. This book is so confusing to me. And it was one of those books where I had to read a page and then be like, what? on earth did I just read and then read it again and then like probably read it one more time. If you can get past the kind of like magical spiritual mumbo jumbo in it, I do think that there is a lot of interesting information in there. And if you can really allow yourself to just kind of believe in this uh, little, little kooky, interesting <laughs> things that he says, um, it's fascinating. And so after I read that book, then I started to do his morning and night meditations. I think I bought them each for like $2 on iTunes. So you can download his meditations on iTunes. And then I set my phone alarm in the morning to the morning meditation that he has. So instead of waking up to like an alarm or whatever, I wake up to this meditation. Um, it's a 25 minute meditation. I usually only do it for like five or 10 minutes because I don't have time to do 25 minutes. It is just kind of a nicer way to wake up and doing meditation first thing in the morning when your brain waves are in a more susceptible state is apparently better for you. And it's just nicer to wake up to someone like slowly talking to you than a meh, meh, meh. One of my favorite books that I read this year is called The Power of Habit. 
It sounds like a self-help book, but it's actually more of a business book. It's fascinating. It goes into all these studies about different companies that used psychology and like human habits to grow their businesses. And especially doing, you know, social media and like my whole job is like trying to, to figure out what people are interested in. Um, I just think it was a really cool book to read. The next book that I read that had a massive, massive impact on my life at the time that I read it is called Quit Like Woman by Holly Whittaker. I've talked about this on my Instagram a lot. And if you've watched a number of my videos, you guys probably know that I have had a weird relationship with alcohol basically my entire life. I will say right now, I'm at a really good place with it. I think just because my overall mental health is better and I can casually drink and feel okay and I don't have to get blacked out drunk. But at the time that I read this book, I had a really bad relationship with alcohol. I was drinking too much. I was getting really, really sick all the time. I had constant, horrible, debilitating anxiety every single time that I would go out and drink. I would wake up the next morning at like 4 a.m. in like this like lurching panic of like, what did I do last night? What did I say last night? And it was just, it honestly was like tearing my life apart for months and it would come and go in waves. Um, but I read this book and it kind of pushed me to really explore this kind of sober curious movement that was going on. Um, so the end of last year, I went fully sober for like three-ish months. And I think doing that and going fully sober for a time and just really allowing myself to be the healthiest version of myself without alcohol and without using alcohol as like a social fix or to make myself more confident, it was very healing. Even if you don't plan to ever stop drinking or take a break from drinking, I do think this book is very important just to be more aware of the alcohol industry and specifically what alcohol does to our bodies, especially if you are struggling with any type of depression or mental health issues, how negatively alcohol can impact your brain and your happiness, even just like one drink a week. The next book that I would recommend to everyone is called The First 90 Days. And this book was actually gifted to me by my mom right when I graduated college and before I had started my first corporate job. And it is a business book all about everything that you should do during your first 90 days at your job and how to make them the most successful that they possibly can be. And for anyone, whether you've been in a job for a while or especially, especially if you're going into a new job, a new company, working with a new team, this book has so much valuable information on how to work with other people. And for me, I feel like one of the hardest, hardest parts about working corporate is learning how to work with other people, learning other people's communication styles, learning the way that your boss wants things communicated to her, learning how to just like get along with people and be likable in the workplace, which I feel like is super, super important and something that a lot of people tend to overlook, but really, really is something that can make or break you at a company. Highly, highly recommend anyone working in an office or a corporate situation to read that book. I read it every single time that I started a new job and I feel like I had a very successful start to my corporate career that I've since transitioned away from, um, but very helpful. And then of course I also have The Artist's Way, which I think I'm on like week 10 or 11 or something and I'm still slowly working my way through. Now that I've gone over my favorite non-fiction self-helpy books, these are my favorite fiction books. And just a little disclaimer, I do have to say that I have a very, very specific type of fiction book that I pretty much exclusively stick to. I don't really read like romance novels. I don't really read fantasy. I basically only read like murder mysteries, horror, and books about really, really fucked up female protagonists. Gillian Flynn is by far my favorite author. I absolutely blast through her books. I wish she had more. She only has a few, but she wrote Gone Girl, Sharp Objects, and Dark Places. All three of those I think are just phenomenal and I'm obsessed with and I wish I could read again for the first time. Similarly, I loved Verity. I've not read any of Colleen Hoover's like romance books. To be honest, romance books just kind of bore me to death. I think the closest that I've ever gotten to like a romance book was The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and even that I didn't love but verity was so good i read that in one sitting on the couch i literally did not get up from the couch and i read through the whole book i also really like women in cabin 10 and woman on the train those are my favorite books um i also 
listen to a lot of podcasts, which you guys probably know. So maybe in a future video, I can do a little roundup on my favorite podcasts as well. Okay, I have to leave for this tennis event pretty soon. I'm not wearing what I would normally wear to a match. I'm wearing much more casual, but I did just get this bag sent to me. It's from their like tennis collection. So I kind of want to pick out something that would go with this. I just love this top. It's so comfy with the bag. I wanted to find something yellow, but I realized I literally own nothing yellow. And then I'm just wearing my 2X platform Converse, but that is the fit for tonight. The hot shot. Good morning, it is Sunday today. I'm going to a brunch this morning for Chamberlain Coffee, which is Emma Chamberlain's coffee brand. I've worked with them for a couple years. They were like one of the first brands to actually gift me and I drink their coffee in my coffee machine here at home and love their matcha and stuff. I'm going by myself. I always get a little bit like anxious going to influencer events by myself because honestly you never know the vibe. Sometimes you meet really cool fun girls and it's super fun and you leave with new friends and sometimes you go and it's just a little awkward to be honest. So I'm crossing my fingers. I'm excited for that and then I'm going straight from brunch to the UTS tennis event again here in LA. Um, we had a bunch of friends go yesterday. I think we're having more friends go today and if Taylor wins the one at 4 p.m. then he will be in the finals which I think is at like 7 p.m. ish. I wanted to go pretty casual on the outfit today but this is the jacket that I showed in my vlog last week and I tried it on this morning. I'm obsessed with it. It definitely is very oversized but it's cute and it's quite like kind of gloomy in LA today. I also got this PR package the other day that was all Barbie themed so I got this phone case. I've had the Octobuddy for a while, but the whole PR box was all Barbie themed. I have not seen the movie yet. I'm seeing it on Tuesday. 